Okay, uh, Will Terry here. I'm going to make a little video tutorial on how I add color to a spot image. And this is a little project that I've been working on. i um, not going to talk about what it is yet, but it's coming soon. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, so I'm in Photoshop CS5. I've got the uh, painting uh, workspace loaded here. And um, I, I've already got my, my layers over here. And this is this image that you're seeing on on this level right here, is um, was drawn on my iPad in the brushes program. I don't use a stylus; I use my finger to draw with. And I keep I always get that question asked, so I'll just answer it whenever I can. Um, I prefer use my finger because I'll never forget to take to leave home without it, and it'll never break, and I'll never have to try to find the same stylus if I fall in love with one. Um, and they stop making it or something like that. So I've just learned to draw with my finger and I love it now. Okay, so here's the image that I brought in. I want to get rid of this white space out here. So I'm going to get the magic wand. And uh, my tolerance is set at 100 because I want to make sure I get all the white gone when I hit delete. I'm going to hit backspace here and all the white's gone. And you can see. Okay, so moving right along, um, what I want to do is color this little shark. And so when I select him, one of the things that I have found is that you just can't quite get the, the selection exactly where you want. And you get these jaggies, even though it, it visually appears smoother. If I paint this right here, then this the edge is going to look more jagged than it actually is. It's going to have these little bumps that because they're light they don't show up but if I put dark paint in there they're gonna show up more so and this is going to be used um, uh, for mobile devices uh, is the end product so it doesn't have to be that high resolution anyway but I've got plenty of resolution I'm actually working about four times larger than the resolution of an iPad right now so what I've found is you can go to select and then modify and then contract and what I want to do is contract this selection so I'm going to track contract it by four pixels and oops excuse me I want I want to do the opposite of that that expanded I want to um, let's do that again I want to um, did I hit expand I thought I hit contract that's odd oh I know why because I'm select I'm not selected on the um, see there's always something that you have to figure out I've selected this uh, this whole area out here. What I need to do is select inverse. So, so the guy teaching this little tutorial is an idiot, in case you were wondering. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is go in and select and modify and contract. And this time it'll work. So I just chose four pixels because it feels about right. And if we look at the selection now, what it's done is it's, sh it's shrunk it all the way around. And so now I'm going to paint a little bit on the line, but the outside of the line is going to remain intact. So I'll just reduce it down a little bit. Then I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to get, oh, maybe a gray right about there. Just select my opacity and flow up to 100%. And I'm just going to paint over this whole excuse me, image right here. And um, I, I, I don't need to paint over the whole thing because I'm not going to use all that paint. I'm going to come to opacity over here. I'm just going to knock that down a little bit. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. Do I? No. Oh, I know why. I'm on the wrong way. I am not thinking today. I need to lock this layer now and I need to get a new layer. And this tutorial is going to be about twice as long as it needs to be simply because I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, that's what I want it to look like right there. So you can see that there's there's paint. I, I just filled it with the with the paint bucket. Um so it's just kind of filled in right now. And you can also see the line that's sticking out from that. That's the look that I want right now. So now I'm gonna go in on this layer just so I can see my drawing, and I'm gonna just just to make it easier for me, I'm just going to reduce 
with this opacity here, reduce it down a little bit. Then I'm going to get my eraser and it's set on 100%. And I'm going to make sure that the, and you can use the bracket keys to um, increase and decrease the size of the eraser. But I'm going to use the shift button and then I'm going to use the bracket keys to control the edge and that makes a really hard edge if it's all the way down in one position that's hard to control so I'm gonna back off and go shift bracket left bracket just once and that'll make a a little bit more of a smooth brush and then I'm just gonna kinda of go in here and I'm just gonna erase this and it, and it won't take long and I don't have to be completely precise because I want this to kinda of have I don't want this to have a vector art feel so much as where it's where everything is perfect so I just want it to kind of you know feel more like it was hand done I guess and then I'm just gonna erase all this and then come around his fin here because his fin is dark and then I'm just gonna get rid of all this out here and then if we look at this okay so we're we've got the the gray now I'm gonna with the opacity I'm just gonna make it go back up to where I feel I want it and I'm gonna go it's more of a feeling you know um, it ends up being 86 percent but whatever you end up doing on your projects it will probably be different from that you know um, this is gonna be my paint layer now and so I'm just gonna get a new layer I'm going to lock that so I don't accidentally get on it. And then I'm going to just grab another color. And I'll try to move a little faster here. And just kind of paint in here on this layer. And then I'm going to do the same thing where I turn the opacity down. And I'm just going to erase this off. And I have really fallen in love. Oops. I grab the eraser. With the eraser tool. Um, it's just... Um, it's really become part of my workflow. Another thing I would say is make sure you're zooming in uh, a lot when you're working on detail and when you're trying to be precise. It will make your life so much easier to make sure that you're zoomed in instead of trying to, to work. Now, and this is one of the advantages of working digitally. If you're, uh, if you're still working traditionally, um, you just this, this is this is probably one of the main reasons why I ended up working um, digitally. Ah, I keep getting a little too close there. Uh, just because it really allows you to get into details and, and make them work for you and, and get them precise. I'm just gonna race around here. I'm using a Wacom tablet, um, the Intuos 3. I haven't upgraded to the 4, 5, or 6, or 8, or 10, or whatever they're on right now. Uh, no need. The the 3 is fine. I'm going to come back over here to Opacity and just darken that to where it feels about right. Maybe right about there. And then I'm going to um, merge these two layers because I like what I have. I'm just going to merge those lock it get a new layer this is kind of the way that I've learned to work so I don't mess up what I've already done I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna go get a different color for um, his undercarriage here I'm gonna decrease the paint a little bit and just kind of oh you know on this one I want this to feather so I'm gonna actually give myself a really soft airbrush and just kind of brush him like this so he has a real um, feathered quality to him and then I'm gonna get the eraser again and I'm just gonna go in and erase everything I don't want and it's just a process of of spray this is this is a lot how you'd work um, if you were using friskets and an airbrush but then I'm gonna go back into using a texture brush at the end to put the details in. I'm just going to knock this back here.
and we're getting there. I don't want this little video to go on too long, so I'm gonna try to hurry through this. Okay, let's zoom again. I, when I was uh, painting with acrylic, which I did for the first 18 years of my illustration career, this, these kind of little vignettes or, or spot images used to drive me nuts because of all the edge work um, that I had to do with a paintbrush. And it just, it just took forever. And, and sometimes I would have clients that would ask, you know, can you do you know, 20 little spot illustrations and they'd want to pay a really small amount versus what they were pay used to paying for full bleed, uh, full page uh, illustrations. And, and I would give them a quote and they'd, they'd want it to be a lot lower. And I'd say, well, it just takes me so long to, to work on these edges. And now you can already see how fast it is to lay some color in on, on something like this. And I'm going a little faster. I'm going to be making a few little mistakes like you just saw there where I'm leaving stuff, but it's not that big of a deal. And then I'm just going to come in here and get another layer. Let's run the flat and then let's see, merge layers. And now I'm going to put a shadow in for the, for the, um, for the teeth. And just kind of, you can just see just put a little shadow in there and then erase that off to kind of give the illusion that the teeth go back in the mouth. You can see that there. Okay, and then um, I'm going to select this guy again and let's just go ahead and you know I could have had him selected while I painted this body that was dumb it's hard to make a tutorial and think at the same time and if you don't believe me try it it's real fun now oh, actually I love making little tutorials oops I'm selected on I'm gonna select inverse Just want to darken the, his edge here to give him more of a, a three-dimensional quality. So I'm just going to really grab some black there. And uh, let's increase the opacity a little bit and just reinforce these edges of his uh, leading leading fins and, and maybe his back. And the top of him, maybe, maybe catch the leading edge on this. You know, I just realized I am actually on the wrong layer again. This happens to me all the time, and I probably don't have enough layers of undo. I don't. So I'm an idiot again, working too fast here. But that's all right. This is just a tutorial. So I'm going to get another layer here and finish where I started on that. This That's why it wasn't really coloring in the way I wanted it to. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to leave that shadow under his fin there. Okay, so that's kind of what I wanted to show you, but now I'm going to show you like adding the highlights. And I think that um, one of the neat things about doing this with the... Um, uh, let's go ahead and merge these layers. With, with using the texture is that that's really what things look like in nature. Um, you You end up seeing texture in... The half tone areas you you typically don't see it in the shadow areas or the brightest highlight areas and so this will tend to make him have a little bit more of a uh, realistic feel to him just having some texture so i've got my new layer now i'm on the right layer for once and i'm going to get kind of a uh, gray here i'm going to go back to my texture palette and i have a video tutorial 
on how to use this this texture palette so if you are into that at all um, you can check that out I have a link on the side for Folio Academy and you can see my video tutorials there um, which go into depth on how to set up for using the texture palette um, so anyway well, I've got the texture brush now and I'm just going to set my opacity way down and my flow way down and this is a thing that I've learned to do is actually to use the eraser to create a a modulation in the paint so to get more of a, a transition look I'm just going to kind of feel this right here so I'm going to go ahead and brush this this first part of the highlight on now you're going to notice that <clears throat> it is uh, the same on either edge okay I'm going to do it again on here but I'm going to show you a really easy way to to modulate that or to to make a really smooth transition and then to finally pop the highlight okay so I'm going to put it on his tail here and then put it on his fin. I love the rotation feature in this CS5. It's. It, I used to get, uh, when I first started painting digitally a few years ago, I got really bad wrist cramps and I didn't know if I was going to be able to continue working digitally. Uh, but the, the rotation feature in Photoshop saved me. Okay, so <clears throat> So there's the first part of the of his um, of the highlights, and so what I'm going to do though to 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 make this look more realistic and to have more of a transition, I'm going to get the eraser. I'm going to set the eraser by shift bracketing on the left bracket, and I'm going to make the eraser super smooth. I'm going to set the opacity and the flow down to about 30 percent, somewhere in there. And then I'm just going to erase the edges. So just grab the eraser and then just kind of just come across it this way. And, and don't go all the way to the middle. And that will help make it uh, come in. And it's, a, it's basically modulating it. You know, I mean, it's, and that's what things do in nature. So you're really, you're really again, um, mimicking what happens with these, these transitions. This is what what really uh, makes something look, um, you know, professionally rendered versus, um, you know, somebody that's more on the beginning stages of learning. Uh, and look at how easy that is. And this is one thing that I never could do, obviously, with with painting in acrylic. But it just it makes it it's just like so easy. Now when I come back on top of that, I'm gonna I like that what I have, so I'm gonna merge those layers and get a new layer in case I mess up I'm gonna go, go ahead and go for the white this time and then I'm just gonna come right on top and just punch that little light just by rubbing that and you, you know you can if you get it too bright and too splotchy you can always erase that too so it just makes it so easy to get those highlights in there and there's just nothing special about that other than knowing you know where to put it but you know you can see how how nice and glossy he looks and I you know I can go and do his eyeball and stuff but for the all intents and purposes on this video I think you can see um, maybe there's a way that you can use this to help you in uh, in your illustration and um, so hopefully that helps and thanks for watching my little tutorial.